Thanks, Adi. Hi, good morning, everybody. So my name is uh, Kieran Quinn. I'm the research support librarian here at Maynooth University Library. So I'm going to talk this morning a bit about um, tracking the impact of research data. And you're probably familiar with, um, you know, tracking the impact in terms of you know, um, academic journal articles. Uh, but increasingly, there's more and more research data available as well. So I just thought I'd take a look at how do you actually measure the impact of that. So first, just quickly, what is research data? So it's it's, it's all sorts of materials, all the kind of um, material that you create when you're doing your research. So it could be uh, data, records, files, um, digital, physical co content, uh, research observations, findings, outcomes, primary materials, analyzed data, a whole range of different types of data. So people often think they don't have data, but they generally do in their research. And if you want more on that, actually, I do have quite a good guide on this. Uh, but comprehensive contains a lot of information generally around the broader sense of research data management. And there is the link into that if you want to have a look at that. So why measure the impact of research data? So lots of reasons. Um, from a researcher level, it's as I mentioned, it's a bit like so it's tracking the impact of your journal articles, but this is going to track the impact and the attention that your research data uh, receives. You're also able to monitor who's using your data, uh, seeing if the data has been useful to other researchers, showcasing the differences making both within the academic community and beyond, measuring online attention, um, meeting funder requirements, safeguard data for the appropriate length of time since last use. So as you probably know, generally with um, funders now, it's a requirement to make your data available open access. So you need to provide certain uh, reassurances to them as well. So when, when you can track it like that, that, that's something you can use it for. Uh, dissemination of your research, showing how your data was used to drive new knowledge, identifying and cooperation with your data into larger data sets of data products, and showing the use of your software or workflow. So it's more than just, I suppose, those citations in an article. It's showing that broad or maybe societal impact of your work as well. And you can do a lot of that online. Then at an institutional level, you can also uh, use you know, the tracking of the impact of research data from a planning point of view. So the success of the infrastructure providing access to data, for example, in particular to go into capacity requirements and storage, archival and network systems. So if your institution does have a data repository, you can, uh, you know, look at the metrics just to see if it's uh, suitable. Uh, you can also then use it for promotional activities, uh, celebrate data re sharing and reuse successes by researchers at the institution. So if you want to build a nice narrative around and uh, the impact of your research, you can do that. And you could also maybe create special collections around popular data sets. So if there's particular data sets that are very popular, you could uh, you know, promote those as a, as a special collection. So types of data metrics. Um, so kind of two different ways of measuring, I suppose, is the data package itself. And these are the collection of data and other assets in a single package. It provides the basis for convenient delivery, installation, and management of data sets. So this is the data that's actually stored in a repository. Okay. And you can get metrics on that in the data citation index in Web of Science. And then there's data papers. And you'll find those in Scopus and Web of Science. The data paper is actually, I suppose, a descriptor. It's describing what the data is about. So it goes beyond maybe the metadata you've included in the repository. The paper will actually be written about it as well. You'll provide um, further, deeper levels of description about the data. Okay, so data papers and data journals. So data sets are increasingly being recognized as scholarly products in their own right, hence the need to cite them. Uh, data papers facilitate the sharing of data in a standardized framework that provides value, impact, and recognition for authors. They also provide a uh, much more thorough context and description than data sets that are simply deposited in a repository. With met metadata, metadata can be great, which, you know, it's great to have additional information about the data as well. Uh, they don't usually include any interpretation or discussion. They're literally just descriptive. And it may be included as part of a standard journal or in a data journal. So there could be, you know, a paper within a, an established journal, or there would also be a number of um, specifically data journals. But that's all they would have would be, um, you know, data papers. And they provide quick access to high quality data sets that are broad interest in the scientific community, intended to facilitate reuse of the data set, which increases its original value and impact and speeds the pace of research by avoiding unintentional duplication of effort. So it's providing your know, details about the data, and then there'll also be a link then through to the repository that the, the data is actually in. And the data journals are usually peer reviewed, not always, but generally they are. And just an example of one there for its system science data. And if you wanted to find data journals, uh, you can go and you can look in Zenodo. They have a list of data journals in there that you can have a look at. If you're looking for examples of uh, you know, journals to publish in, you can find them there. 
And then there's also listings of open data journals. So Foster eLearning Traffic, for example, has quite a good list. And then there's also sources of data set peer review. Okay, so some publishers are experimenting with providing peer review services on data papers where the full data set resides in a data repository. So you could go in and have a look at those as well. So where is the data set? So the data set itself is going to be deposited in a repository. The data is archived in there. It provides, provides access to it and it will also assign a unique identifier. So a DOI, a digital object identifier, will be assigned by the repository to that particular data set. And that's generally how you're going to find uh, data sets. You'll know, use the DOI is the best way to search for them. And it's just one the data repositories themselves. So again, if you want to go and have listings of different research data repositories, uh, read three data is very good. And this is also a wiki uh, data repositories, and you'll find listings in there by subject area. Again, if you want to go, you'll find uh, places to deposit your research, uh, your data. And also, if you just wanted to go and look for data sets, they would be the places to go and have a look. So what do the data metrics look like? So the two main types of data metrics. So the data citations and alt metrics for data. So data citations are attempts to track data that influence and reuse in scholarly literature. So as it appears, as it's referenced in scholarly literature. So that could be in you know, your regular academic papers. It could also be in data papers. The alt metrics bit is showing, for example, in Maynooth, we use alt metric explorer. That's going to show the attention it's receiving online. So are people tweeting about it? Is it in blogs, media, social media, all that kind of stuff, you know, just what is the attention that the data is getting online. Now, the data citations themselves, they're either citing the data package directly, often by pointing to where the data is hosted in a repository, or they're citing a data paper that describes the data set, uh, which functions primarily as detailed metadata and offering the added bit benefit of being in a format that's much more appealing to many publishers. So you have a couple of different options there where you're going to find uh, the impact of the papers. Okay, so this is the data citation index, and this comes in the Web of Science. Okay, and just be careful when you go into the website, the default page is all databases. So you actually need to go in here and just select, hit your little drop down arrow and select for the data citation index. Okay, and that's where you're going to find the links to the, the data packages and the data papers and so on. Okay. And then you would search down here as normal. So you can search whatever way you want. It could be by author, institution, topic, you know, whatever is appropriate. You can search and then you can filter down the results uh, to whatever you wanted to pull out of it. So here's an example. For the, I looked for example by Maynooth by affiliation, just put in the Maynooth University address. And I get uh, 86 results from data citation index. You can see there, there's links there. You can see there's you see data sets that are in Zenodo. So I could click straight into those if I wanted to. Okay, and you can also at that point you can create citations, whether from you know by your search, by your author, by an article. So if you want it to be alerted, if there's uh, any new citations for those, you can just click the citation alert there. Okay, and this is when you click through then it's the actual data component. You can go and view the data. Okay, and then from that then you can create so the in Zenodo itself, which is the repository bit for the data set. It'll tell you in there the number of views, the number of downloads. So that's something you could use, you know, if you want to show the impact of your data, you know, how many people have viewed it, how many people have downloaded it. It's quite useful. So it's different to the citation approach as such. That's just a close up of that. Okay. Now you can also search in there by the digital object identifier for a particular paper if you wanted to. And you just again just select DOI and just pop your uh, DOI number in there. And again, you'll get your, you know, your paper up. Okay, so there's one for example, and again, there's your number of views, your number of downloads. Okay, views and downloads. Okay, and just to note, these are the typical measures of interaction you get from repositories, views and downloads. So, citing the actual data bit, I'm going to come back to find them again in a second as well, but just to be aware that. Um, when you're putting your data set up, you'll want it to be cited in a particular way, so you can actually put in. Uh, details of how you'd like it cited and because obviously you want to get credit for your work and just to pay less attention to licenses as well when you're doing that but the data citation includes typical things like the author creator date of publication title publisher url or even better a doi a data access to citation standards and so on so just remember to do all that and this is just an example of a, how you would cite data from, from Zenodo, for example so you see all the usual all the authors are in there and then the doi number 
down the bottom as well. So just to pay attention to that and say they generally will they will give you um, details of how to cite it when you do come to cite it. Now you can also for tracking the citations, you can use Crossref as well, and this will search uh, DOIs as reference scholarly literature. And it's data site actually issues the DOIs for Figshare, Dryad, and a number of other repositories. And these are the people who are data site members who are using that tool. So you can have a list and see if you know your institution is included in that. Okay. And you can also, in, within Zenodo itself, you can search within it and upload your papers to Zenodo as well. You just have to register with them. So you can sign up for an account there if you wanted to load your papers up. And this is how they're going to look. So look at that. Okay, I so say you can browse within it then as well. So great resource. But anyway, back to the actual citations themselves. So the data paper citations. So you're going to search the web of science and you can search by the topic, for example, and then filter for data papers. So for example, I searched for mammal ecology in here. I got 472 results, and then I refined my data paper type. Okay, and I might actually just uh, pop out of that for a second because I think sometimes it'll, it'll make more sense when you actually um See it, I think. Yeah, just to go back out of that. Yeah. So here we go. So when you go into the Manus Library homepage, you're going to be going down into the A to Z of databases. You're going to go into Web of Science. Is that that? Log in. Let's put that back up here. So this is Web of Science. As I mentioned, that there's a your Web of Science core collection. Looks like that. And you just go in there and just down into Data Citation Index. And there's your topic. So for example, I want to do my you know, mammal ecology. Let's search in there. And then you can see they're all, you can view the data within that if you wanted to. So these are data sets within that. And then there's also data studies as well, whichever you wanted. Okay. But when you want to go into them, you can just literally click in on the title there. And then down the bottom, let's see more data fields. Okay. Generally, there'll be a link there. You can zip through into the data as well if you wanted to. That one's actually a letter, so I to... Yeah, I'm just going to select just for the data sets and refine that. Okay. There's my data set there. So this is just popping me out to the University of Victoria. It depends where it actually is deposited. In this case, the data is in their repository. It could also be you know, any any one of a number of different repositories, and there's the files there, and you just go into those. Okay. That's telling me there, I see the number of downloads. Whereas this end of thing would tell me, so I could sort, for example, there by how you cite it, and it'll give me any citations for those data sets as well in there. Okay. That makes sense. And the, the other example I was using there in the video, for example, I could also search them by, say, if I wanted for all of Maynooth, just go into the address, uh, Manuk University. Okay, and there's my results there, data. Yeah, see so that down here, then go to data sets there, or data studies, whatever types of content they happen to be, whatever is available, I can click into those. It's very easy to just move your way through it, you know, pick up your citations, and if you wanted to, you could go to the actual data itself and just see what kind of interactions you're getting with your data, whether that is, um, you know, papers or whatever it happens to be. Okay, so that is that. Right. Just click this on again. Ah. Zip along for us. Okay. So, so that's the that's kind of the web of science bit. You know, the data citation index. It's a bit like that. Okay, but say it's kind of useful to, to just get a sense of uh, there's the citation details, creating alerts. 
Now, Scopus is slightly different. Um, Scopus doesn't have that separate, you know, data citation tool. So what you need to do with Scopus is actually search in the general database itself. So this is your normal, you know, uh, Scopus homepage, and you can search in there, whether it's articles, abstracts, keywords, whatever it was doing, wherever you want to search. But in this case, what I've done is I've searched for data papers in inverted commas in the title abstract keyword, and then I've limited down there's a filter, there's a filter off on the left hand side. So I just filtered for data papers and I found there's 126 data papers. Okay, and here they are listed. And then from that, you can just click into them to see what the contents are, and you can also pick up on a number of citations. So this one you can see this data paper has 40 citations, which is pretty impressive. So you could use that in your, you know, when you want to promote your work. But as I say, there's no separate data citation index in Scopus as such. And again, within this, you can set alerts again. So you register for an account with Scopus, and then you can set alerts. So if you want to know if anybody is citing your papers, you can do that. And there's details of that data paper, citations, and so on. Okay. I say they're not linking to research data generally in Scopus. Some of them are. I think it's something that's increasing. But certainly, the, it's the web of science wants things to be better that way, to actually link through to your data. Now, what you can also do with Scopus, you can search by an author. So this Gerhard Sutz, you can search for this guy. Okay. And then I can filter. So there's all the citations. So I click into citations, which again, of course, you can set alerts for all this if you wanted to. And then I selected just the data papers. So there is the data papers relating to Gerhard. So I go in there and again, I could filter that down by numbers of citations if I wanted to. Okay, it's a little clunkier than Web of Science, but you know, it's still a little find uh, what you're looking for. Now, Alternative Explorer is another one I thought I'd just mention. Um, so, as a lot of you will know, Alternative Explorer is a metrics tool that Minute subscribes to. And the way it works is it, it captures, whereas the Web of Science and Scopus will you know, capture citations. Or Metro Explorer will do that as well, but it's also very interested in what are the other conversations around your work. So, you know, what are people doing online? Are they interacting with your work? So when you sign up for All Metro Explorer, which you're all entitled to do as Manute people, you can go in and it'll be this. I have it set there at the moment for the full Altmetric database, but you can also narrow it down just to Manute content if that's what you want to do. And then you can start searching that either by DOI um, or you know, subject areas, filter by departments, individuals whatever you want to do. Now, just say about Altmetric Explorer, it doesn't uh, <coughs> track people as such. What it's doing is picking up on how you disseminate your work, maybe in an online environment. So you would need to be thinking about putting in a link to your data, you know, maybe the, or the, the DOI to a data paper. So you're making it easier for people to actually get into all your data or that paper. And then, you know, maybe putting handles in so other people are seeing it. So that you're kind of creating that kind of conversation around your work. Um, otherwise, it won't, it won't appear in Automatic Explorer. So you need to kind of create the conditions for it to do that. But if it is in there, it'll come up and it'll start to pick up things like interactions on social media, policy and patents, news and blogs, other sources, academic sources, a whole range of different topics. It's a very useful tool. Okay, and there's the retention score for papers. So those donuts, if you're not familiar, the colors are different types of interactions. So again, whether there's Twitter or Facebook or you know, a media news story or a social media story, whatever it happens to be, it'll isolate all those. So that's great if you can find those kind of interactions around your data papers. It's, it's, it's very useful. They see there I put in all, and I just put in data paper just as an additional search in there. Okay, so these are just the attention scores. So they're things like social social web, Twitter, blogs, public policy documents, and so on. Two main types of metrics, repository source metrics. So these are metrics they're pulling in from repositories because this is what they tend to do in the universities. They'll hook into the repository contact to you know, identify researchers. And of course, it also provides the full text of the documents. And then social web metrics as well. It'll pull that in. Okay. So this is another one, uh, Scopus Plum metrics. So this is um, when you're searching within Scopus, they use an alt metric tool called PlumX. And there's a link out to that. So for example, you go into say, you know, paper like this. And then you can kind of scroll down a bit and you'll find a link into your regular metrics and then other metrics. And when you click in there, you get PlumX metrics. So you can see in there it's picking up, 
you know, citations, policy citations, Mendeley, Twitter, and so on. Okay. And this is a data paper, it's pulling the in information on. You can see the way this is one of the tweets, for example, and they're actually putting graphs as well of the data. So, you know, it's kind of a thing you can create yourself as well. See that they've got the DOI in there, nice image and so on. Handles of different people. And this is what you need to do when you're tweeting, just to draw attention uh, to your papers. And there again, Twitter, more elaborate. This is the kind of content you'd want to be putting into your tweets, to draw attention to your papers. Okay, so that's kind of it. Um, I take a few questions I've got. So, as I mentioned, the, the, the main points that are this data citation index in web of science, which will find your data papers and your data sets. And then the scope, as you can search that as well, not quite as efficiently, but you still will find them. Um, generally, for the papers, you're getting citations. For the repositories, then you're getting views, downloads, that kind of information. And then, off metrics or plumex, you're picking up those interactions with your data sets or data papers. Of course, you can build into then a discussion around your work. So that is kind of saying that I'm happy to take questions now. So I'll just stop sharing and I'll see if there's any.